My name is Gary Harpster, and you're watching Understanding Wasps and LPV, Part 4 of 4. What is LPV? What are LNAV, VNAV, LPV, and LP approaches? LNAV is a non-precision approach. It uses GPS and or WAS for the lateral navigation, but there's no vertical guidance. Typically, it takes you down to 400 feet. LNAV slash VNAV again is a non-precision approach. Provides lateral guidance from the GPS or WAS receiver and vertical guidance from a barometric altimeter or the WAS. No WAS must have VNAV altimeter. Decision altitude typically around 350 feet. LPV? LPV is a precision approach. It stands for localizer performance and vertical guidance and uses the WAS GPS only most desired approach that you can be offered. Typically takes you down to 200 to 250 feet decision height. LP. Future approach that will use the high precision of LPV for lateral guidance and barometric altimeter for vertical. Runways that are due to obstacle clearance or infrastructure limits, vertical guided approaches cannot be published. LPV operational benefits. Currently over 1,975 runways across the United States and more to come. Many approaches having minimums to 200 foot height above touchdown with half mile visibility with greater accuracy and consistency. Once you've flown a GPS approach with LPV, you'll be amazed at how the aircraft performs and how stable it is. The electronic glide path eliminates intermediate step down approaches. No more dive and drive approaches. This type of an approach provides more comfort for your passengers, less ear popping, and just more comfort and safety overall. The glide path becomes independent of ground or barometric equipment. Everything is calculated internal to the aircraft. WAS and LPV eliminates cold temperature effects, incorrect altimeter settings, and lack of local altimeter source. Questions that were often asked is, if I install a WAS capable equipment, am I ready to fly LPV approaches? And the answer is no. WAS receivers cannot be installed under straight field approval. There's a lot more to the field approval process. Once it's installed in the aircraft, the installing agency needs to make sure that all equipment in the airplane is properly functioning. That means the autopilot, the scaling, everything that becomes a part of this equation needs to be checked. So it's a lot more stringent than a straight field approval. Most WAS receivers are installed under an STC. WAS capable avionics do not automatically mean that you can fly to an LPV minimum. To accomplish the LPV minimums, you need dual WAS receivers. They must be certified under TSO 145-146. We're often asked the question, can I upgrade my existing navigational system to a WAS receiver? And the answer is no. The current systems are certified under TSO C-129, a completely different criteria. TSO C-145 and 146 means that the units are certified as a standalone receiver. No other signal needs to go into that box in order to give it the accuracy that it'll present on your aircraft instruments. It also requires an antenna change. The antennas are different from a TSO 129 box to what's certified in the 145-146. Installation is currently being done by STC. It requires dual GPS receivers, other equipment mods such as the scaling, autopilot, annunciation, whether it's external or on the EFAS systems, and a flight test procedure are all required. This map shows some of the airports that are across the United States. The LPV approach on an approach plate is called out. You'll see that it says WAS approach on it. So just like any other approach, GPS approach, VOR approach, ILS, it calls out particular criteria. So you take the approach appropriate to that airport, channel it up in your receiver, and fly the approach. For more information, call a Duncan Aviation Expert at 800-228-4277 or visit duncanaviation.aero slash wasp for additional information.